Shannon proof of perfect secrecy. Until Mr. Vernon in 1917 patented his now famous Vernon cipher, cryptography was based on increasing complexity. People invented more and more complicated machineries, tables, rotating wheels to mix data in such a way that it will be difficult to unmix. And here comes Vernon and says, no, simplicity is the answer. And he takes this simple table that says, if you mix zero with a zero, you get a zero. You mix one with one, you get a zero. One with zero, you get a one. Zero with one, you get a one. And you use this to take any message, any combination of bits, which is the message, with another combination of bits, which is we call the key, and then you do this relationship, which is called XOR, exclusive OR, bit by bit, bit by bit, bit by bit, and you get the ciphertext. So we write ciphertext equals message XOR times the K, and he can prove that this is such an arrangement that the message is the ciphertext uh, XOR with the key. Simple. It took about two decades or more for Claude Shannon to prove that this simplicity is unbreakable. All those complicated other ciphers at the time and since are breakable. But this super simple cipher is unbreakable. And the proof is so simple, we will see it in a moment. It will take us a few minutes to go through the full proof, which will tell us something very important. That if you don't do what Vernon did, and you decide to go with a key space, the number of possible keys, smaller than the number of possible messages, then you cannot get perfect secrecy. Then it is breakable. Which means that if you use such a cipher as we use today, with smaller key spaces, you always have to be suspicious that the other side has someone more intelligent than you are that breaks it. If you use Vernon, you can be relaxed. You don't care if they have 10 Alan Turing's there on the other side. Vernon cannot be broken. Shannon proved it. Now, to the proof. What Shannon did, he used what is uh, known as the base relationship, which says if you have two somewhat related events that the message of will be particular M, M is one message out of the possibility of all the messages, and the possibility that the ciphertext will be small c out of the uh, ciphertext space uh, C, you can express this in two different ways. We'll take some thinking on your side. You are saying, what's the chance that the ciphertext is C? And out of those cases, what is the chance that if it is C, then the message is M? You multiply these two, you get this. But you can do it the other way around. You can ask yourself, what's the chance for the message to be M, small m, and out of those, message, uh, of those cases, what is the chance that the ciphertext is C, given, that's what this line means, given that the message is M. These two are the same. Shannon used this, took this equation, and rearranged it. 
So Shannon rearranged the relationship, the Bayesian relationship, to look like this. It's the same as what we had before, algebraically rearranged. But what it says now is very interesting. It says here that the probability for the message that was encrypted to be m, small m, given that the cipher, the ciphertext that the user sent out is c, equals this. Now what do we have here? We have this expression that says this is the probability for the message to be small m without any conditions. If this and this are equal, in other words, if this expression equals 1, and these two equate, then we have perfect secrecy, the way we defined it. Because what it says is that the chance for M to be the right message is the same whether you know that the ciphertext is C or that you don't know. If these two expressions are the same, it's perfect secrecy. So all that we have to do now is look at this and see, can this be equal to 1? Let's see. Start with the first expression. This is here. Now, remember how Vernon works. You have messages and you have the same number of keys and the same number of ciphertext. So if I know that the message is a particular M, for the ciphertext to be C, it has to, the writer has to select a particular K. This particular K is one out of how many? If there are n bits to the message, to the key, to the ciphertext, then there are 2 to the power of n, many possibilities of strings, 2 to the power of small n, we call it n, so there are n possibilities. Therefore, the chance for a particular ciphertext given to come out when you use a particular m, which can be used with any of those keys, is 1 divided to the number of keys, which is 1 to n. Good. Now let's see what we have here. This says that we need to find ex the expression for the probability, unconditional probability, for the ciphertext to be c, little c. Now here what Shannon said why don't we take the same expression here that we have here, multiply it by the chance that the message will be the, this particular m, and then add those probabilities over all the possible messages. That will give us the chance for the ciphertext to be c, because we add the probability for this to be C given that this is the message. Then we add the probability for uh, the ciphertext to be the same C given this as the message. And then this is the message. We add those expressions over the entire message space. So this is this. But this, we already found out what it is. This is 1 divided to n. So this can be written this way. 1 divided to n times the probability for the message to be n. We can take the 1n out of the sigma and get this. Now this is very interesting. What is this? This is the sum total 
of the probabilities for all the messages in the message space. Now we know that the writer used one message. So the chance that one message out of the message, message space was used is 100% or 1. So the summary here equals 1. And if this equals 1, then this entire expression means 1 to divide it to n. That means that we have here 1 divided to n and 1 divided to n which is 1 which means that we have this and that's the proof. That's it. With this cryptography on a theoretical basis symmetric cryptography is closed. This is independent of any further specifics. And we don't care how small the adversary is. If he has quantum computing, so he has super talents, it's unbreakable. And if you go deeper, you find out that this rationale requires for the key to be the message space of size n for this to work. If it's less than n, then this does not happen because then the expression here is not 1 divided to n. And if that is the case, this is not equated and we don't have perfect secrecy. And therefore, all the ciphers that we use today in which the key space is much, much smaller than the message space are breakable. That's the side conclusion from the unbreakability proof of Werner. And for that reason, there is now a new possibility where we realize that the impracticality of using Vernon of, at the time of 1917 because of the size of the key can perhaps be overcome with today's technology. But that's another topic. Thank you for tuning in.